guys, today I've been using Distress Oxides to make some pretty die cuts to go in my counterfeit kit for um, April, so I thought I'd show you how I made them. I've got a few things together, um, I love this Amy Tangerine set of, sort of semi-transparent alpha stickers, they go lovely with my kit, I don't know why I've still got them left because I, I love them. Um, I've got a mixture of stamp sets to use, I don't actually use those stamping up ones today but I might keep them with the kit to make some cards and things later on. Um, I've got these little dies, speech bubble dies, and you know, I can't remember where I got those, helpfully, um, but I think all sorts of people make them, uh, um, masking tape there, a little butterfly punch, and this um, Sizzix Biggs die, which cuts butterflies as well, more about that later. Um, I've got some Memento black ink there. Actually, any black ink would have done for today. And that um, perfect medium ink, because it's nice and sticky for embossing, and some white embossing powder. And my Distress Oxides. Um, I put them, I really wanted to use them with this kit, and the colours are perfect. Um, oh, watercolour brushes I'm showing you there. And a spray bottle of water at the ready, and a pot of clean water. Lots and lots of water needed today. Heat gun for drying in between. I don't just love those Distress Oxide colours. I'm going to give you a quick flush there of um, a kitchen roll and some baby wipes. Now the paper I'm working on is this Canson Mixed Media Pad. This paper is brilliant because I know I can throw anything at it, any amount of water, I can put texture paste on it, it's pretty heavyweight, it will pretty, it'll take any kind of punishment. And if it does buckle a bit, I put it under something and it soon flattens out. So here I'm taking off just uh, three or four sheets there. And I start by cutting each, each sheet so that I have an 11 and a half inch square. It won't quite do a 12 inch square. Um, so I, I basically I cut the biggest square I can get out of it, which is 11 and a half inches. So I cut them all down, so I've got those ready for pages. And then I end up with these strips left over. <coughs> excuse me, I had a, I'm on the tail end of a cold, I have to excuse my voice today. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is cut I've put one of those strips aside for later and I'm going to cut the rest down into Project Life card size, which is a 3x4 in this case. Um, and then there are some little smaller bits left over to make tags. There are some pieces I can cut the speech bubbles from. And even those little strips won't go to waste because they'll make nice little sentiment banners and, and what have you. <clears throat> oh dear, excuse me. Sip your coffee, stop your coughing. So I've got three um, three by four cards there. And the first thing I'm doing is cutting a little piece of washi tape to mask off an area at the top of each card. And that's where um, the stamped sentiment will go in the end. Um, so I'm starting off with this colour, which I love. It's um, cracked pistachio, I believe. And I'm just adding some water to it with a big, flat, wide brush. And I'm just randomly painting it on. It's, there's nothing fancy or clever about this at all. And what I like to do is start softly like that and then build it up in areas, uh, in layers because then you get that lovely, the thing with oxides, if you, if you um, dry them in between, you can build up layer upon layer, and um, if you spritz them with water, um, oh, you get these beautiful, well, oxidising effects. Very pretty. See, that paper's buckled up a bit there um, while it's wet, but it will flatten out as it dries, as you can see there. And then I've peeled off the masking tape to reveal that box ready for my wordage to go in. Ah, now there was a little um, little snick of, again with um, these, they're quite 
forgiving if you get a little bit where you don't want it. Oh, <laughs> I'm just putting the card underneath my cutting mat there to flatten out as I'm working on the others. And this time I'm spritzing with water first. So I'm going to be going wet in wet here. Um, I think that colour is wild honey. No, it's fossilised amber. Fossilised amber. And I'm just randomly dibbling the, uh, <laughs> dibbling, that's a technical term, dibbling the brush into the wet card. And I've dried in between there. I'm not obviously bothering to show you the drying with the heat gun. That's quite boring. And now I'm doing another layer. A bit more water. Well, the more, the more water you add, the more interesting it gets, really. You can see that I'm just experimenting there, letting it drip a bit, adding a bit more water, flicking it a bit. It's quite important to keep cleaning up the little area you're working in in between because if the if the colours mix together too much when they're wet they can get a bit muddy and yeah you don't want that that's that's the yellow one done and now I think I'm going to do that red I think that's called ripe persimmon it looks like watermelon red to me to be honest I don't know what colour persimmon is now this time I'm, I'm actually dipping my brush onto the ink pad which is something else you can do it's quite fun to do it that way you can use that with a little brush and, and get tiny details as well it's really nice to work with them like that I've gone back to my previous method now building up the layers and cleaning up in between now I'm pulling all of the others out. <laughs> Cup of coffee there. So I'm using um, a Micron pen now, black, fine black pen. It's a 0.5 I think I've got there. And I'm just scribbling around that sentiment box now, not carefully at all. And if you go over it again and again, it makes your crooked line look deliberate. Which of course it is. <laughs> so here we are. Now I'm going around each of the edges. And then I'll go around. I'll go around them again as well. As I say, just to, because my lines aren't perfect. For some reason, if you do two or three lines, it starts to look on purpose. And there we are, I've done all three of those now. Okay, so I've got my stamp positioner out now. This is the Tim Holtz Tonic Studio one. I absolutely love it. I don't know what I'd do without it now. I want to try um, heat embossing as a resist technique with the Distress Oxides now um, to make some little sentiments to go inside the speech bubbles. So I've had a look through my stamps there and chosen this first one. And so we'll close the lid on the stamp position. I'm going to be using the Perfect Medium ink because it's nice and sticky. I know it will hold my embossing powder really well, even if I'm a bit slow. <laughs> so I'm tap, tap, tapping my stamp there, giving it a good press. And one of the great things about the any, any kind of stamp position like this is that you can re-ink if you think you haven't quite got all the areas. You can do it again and again until you're happy. For me, I think that's that's probably the main the main bonus with it. Although there's lots of other things you can do with it as well. So um, I've now got a folded piece of thin card, which I'm going to use to catch my embossing powder. I'm sure everybody's done this before. Um, tipped off the excess and popping that back in the pot for later. It's amazing how long I think I've had this white embossing powder for years. <laughs> Excuse me. So now I apply my heat gun to melt the embossing powder. I've done a couple there first just to show you. 
And I've got two colours of Distress Oxide there. Um, oh, I did have a purpley one. I think it's Picked Berries or something. And I forgot what this pink one is called. Worn Lipstick. So, same method as just now, except this time I'm painting straight over that embossing, that heat embossed word. So now you can see where the white is showing up against the against that distress oxide. Very pretty. And I'm carefully using a nearly dry wet wipe to clean it up. Carefully because I don't want to wipe off all the distress ink I just put on. Don't forget it is water reactive. And then again with this um, picked berries or I think it's picked berries. Same thing. And again you you know dry it and build up the layers and I'm, I'm just swiping through what's left on the on my craft mat there as well I love all the different um, patterns and textures that come out in it giving that buffing off those those words so you can read them there we are and they're very pretty now um, I need to um, die cut them, turn them into little speech bubbles. So out comes my trusty cuttle bug, which I've had for donkey's years. At least 10 years I've had that. It's one of my, one of my best ever buys, I, I think that was. I have no excuse to buy a new one, I just, uh, I don't need it. Using little bits of tape there to um, just hold it in place. I'm running it through, and there we are. I've, I've uh, gone through and cut a few there. Um, let's see the little speech bubbles in, in different colours. Um, that one I just cut a fishtail banner shape by hand. That one was the shape of the stamp, I think. That one I just scribbled around it and kept it as a, as a strip. That one was the same method with masking off with the with the washi tape. And that one I just doodled around. This one I, I did a kind of an ombre effect. Um, and that tag, I didn't doodle around that at all. I liked the look of it just as it was. Um, so now I just need to add some wordage um, to these Project Life cards. So out comes my tr um, trusty stamping platform again. Just hold it in place with the magnets. Um, I've chosen these scribbly words, which I love from from quite an old set, a um, Heidi Swap set, I think. Um, I still love these, and I think the scribbly look of them will go really well with my with my doodled lines. Um, so I'm using my um, anti-static powder tool there. Oh, spot the obvious mistake here. <laughs> I didn't actually ink up the stamp. Let's try that again, shall we? So um, using my black ink there, giving it a good good press. And again, big advantage with the um, stamp platform is that I can stamp over that again until it's nice and black. Which is what I've done. So now while the ink's still wet I'm just going to clear emboss it. I, I find it easier to use clear embossing powder over a black stamp. That way you don't run the risk of getting little black crumbs everywhere if you've, um, if you've not used your anti-static bag. So gathered them all up, put them out of the way. Now I've brought in that piece of paper I put aside earlier and I've got all my different colours of Distress Oxide back. <coughs> and what I want to do here is create a pretty background. So I'm going to do some uh, packaging technique here. Um, I just want to create an all over random watercolour background to die cut some butterflies from. So I've picked here to start with that worn lipstick and the ripe persimmon. And now I'm going to add the fossilised amber. So all of those colours will mix together fine, they're not they're not going to go muddy um, because they're all warm colours. I've given it a good spritz of water 
And now I'm just gonna smudge that onto the paper. Now it doesn't look too promising to start with, but I promise it does get better. Just keep going. And it's just playing, playing, playing here, really. Um, and then when I'm sort of happy with, with the look of that layer for now, um, I dry off my packaging, get my heat gun out, give it a good dry, and now I can add another layer. So um, just the red and the pinky colours this time. And it's once you start layering these distress oxides together, I think you get the most beautiful effects. And they will just let you layer and layer and layer. They're more, um, they're more opaque, less transparent than the original distress inks. <coughs> so I'm wiping off my bag in between. Again, I, I don't want to end up mixing the colours while they're wet because then they do get muddy, so it's important to keep that cleaned up. And now I'm going into the green. And again, giving it a good spritz. That's the cracked pistachio again. I love the combination of that with, with those pinks. And because of the more sort of opaque nature, it will layer over the top of very pretty. Spritz it with water just to get some interesting effects going. Dob it with a kitchen roll. I think it's getting a bit out of hand or muddy anywhere. And just keep working and working, building up those layers. I generally having fun, really. I really enjoy playing with this. Cleaning up my packaging again. Giving it a blast with my heat gun. And now some more of that cracked pistachio. So you see, I need some more green over the other side. Pretty. Just showing you a bit nearer there. Right. Obviously, still feel I need some more green. Ah, now we're going to do some splattering. So I've got my fan brush out and plenty of water. And I'm just flicking it. These fan brushes make getting flicked drops really easy. I want it a little bit more definite there, so I'm adding some more ink in. And um, depending on how hard you flick it, you can get bigger or smaller drops. <coughs> Excuse me. I quite like rolling over it with a kitchen roll because it picks up, it removes bits of the colour where it's still wet. And I, I like that effect. So now we're going to get some of the purpley colour. Is some purple droppage. Drippage and droppage. This is droppage. <laughs> it's a technical term like dibbling. So there they are, those lovely drops. I think they give a nice contrast against the soft pinks and orangey colours there. Lovely. And now we're going to have some yellow droppage. <coughs> Probably didn't need to show you all these really. It's getting a bit, uh, bit samey now. Come on, crack on. Oh, look at those drops though. Now this one I'm going to, yeah, I'm banging it over the, over another brush so I can get a bit more of a firm. shake there, that's better. And there we are. Now, to give a bit more of a contrast against all those pretty colours, I'm just going to use uh, this scripty stamp just randomly. I'm not putting it on a block because I want it a nice soft edge to it. Um, so just sort of randomly dotting it here and there, a bit of second generation stamping there. So um, now I'm going to 
use this um, butterfly die and I'm just working out how big a piece I need to cut the butterflies I want from that block because there are two larger butterflies on there that I don't want. So I'm just going to cut my strip now into useful size pieces so that I've just cut those butterflies that I want and don't waste my pretty paper on cutting bits of the others that I don't want. So I'm just placing it carefully. I like it face down. I like the die cut edge to be that way round. I think die cuts have a funny edge if you cut them the wrong way round. Oh, that'll either make sense or it totally won't. Oops, doesn't want to go through. I need to just adjust my sandwich slightly there. Poor little cuttle bug. I've worked it so hard over the years. And there we are. That's all my butterflies cut. Aren't they pretty? I love these. They're so pretty. I saw um, Paige Evans do a clever thing with butterflies just recently. She layered them up like that and then stitched them together. Very pretty. So now I'm just gathering together everything I've made and I'm really happy with how those worked out. Here's the little card I made just by sticking the Amy Tangerine letters on, onto a 3x4 card and doodling round. And here are some more butterflies that I doodled around and layered together and put a stitch through just to see how that would look. So here's my finished little pile of pretties. Um, I hope you like them and I hope you enjoyed watching me making a mess with oxides today. <laughs> um, I think these will look lovely with my um, counterpick kit. Thanks for watching everybody. Bye bye.